Hey everyone, welcome to our new episode of the Extra Stitch Podcast. I'm here with Marina and we are in Spring Place, Los Angeles. And yeah, welcome everyone. Today we're going to touch topic uh, called delivery. How we deliver our babies. And we're just going to share stories. I'm going to tell mine. Marina's going to tell her story. <laughs> Marina's experience is quite interesting because she has two babies, so two different experiences. And I can't wait to hear your story, Marina. I can't wait to share. Thank you, Ginta, for your lovely introduction, as always. Um, so I'm really excited to share my experience because it's, um, you know, when you get pregnant, um, the, the biggest thing of your life is delivery because you're like, oh my God, I have to deliver a human being. So both of my deliveries were amazing. And, you know, I had baby before you. And, you know, I, I always told you that it's incredible. Oh my gosh, it's so empowering. And I know it's not like that for everyone, but it was like that for me. And it was like that for most of my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. I do hear horror stories and I do hear bad stories and traumatic stories, but, you know, I do think that it happens. I do believe that nature, you know, gave us body that knows what to do when it comes to delivery. So both of my deliveries were amazing, but they both were so different. One was very medicated and fantastic and the other one is zero medication and natural and in the birthing center that's very interesting so i'll start with my first baby mm -hmm. anna sophia she um didn't want to come out until about 42 weeks and you know the doctor was like let's induce you let's induce you dr goldberg and even though he's a fantastic doctor my favorite human being that passed away, unfortunately, uh, last year from heart attack, but I didn't want to induce. Um, I wanted to kind of give birth natural. So when I was 42 weeks pregnant, my water broke, but like it didn't quite broke. It was like, I started like, my water started kind of coming out a little bit around 7 p.m. at night. Mm -hmm. We were watching TV. I just took a shower. So I was kind of like fresh, like... 7 p.m. we were ready to go to bed because I was really, really pregnant. We weren't going to go out or anything. <laughs> I was like 42 weeks. I obviously were having baby any second. Uh, we decided to, you know, pack our stuff and go to check out with the doctor. But we wanted to take a nap before that. My contractions never start and we fell asleep by accident. And we woke up around like 6 a.m. And I was like, oh, my God, like it's been like 12 hours and for them, when you have 12 hours after your water breaks, mm -hmm. by law, they have to induce you. So my doctor's calling me, my doula calling me. She's like, oh, my God, they're going to blame me that I told her to stay home. So, oh my God. whatever. Stressful. It, right. I'm like sweating telling this story. We like pack our stuff and we go to doctors and we're like in the good spirits because my contraction not happening, like nothing is happening. I feel great. We went to Air One, grab a breakfast. We like eating granola at uh, Mount Sinai. I have like a fantastic room. They check me. I'm not dilated. Nothing is happening. I'm 42 mm -hmm. weeks. And doctor is like, do you actually want to have baby today? I'm like, yeah, let's induce. Because I'm like, at this point, we're in a hospital already. Your it, water broke. I mean. Yeah. It's like yeah. They, they're like, you can go and come back in two hours. And I'm like, no, just induce me. Mm -hmm. so we got the delivery room that was fantastic <laughs> I don't know I just had a great experience right um they induced me like nothing happening for seven hours then I started to get contractions a little bit 
and they were kind of went from none to a lot in a second because of they kept putting pitocin in my body like uh, much you know faster mm -hmm. like much more, sorry like bigger doses right and i was like oh it's kind of hurt and i was like also annoyed at that point i'm like okay when is this baby coming already i was like just just get my epidural i mean they asked me like 70 times already b before that so they give me epidural and uh, you know three hours af later i delivered but like after they give me epidural you feel kind of like nothing mm -hmm. um they were like turning me and they, they were seeing my contractions on the screen mm -hmm. and they were like okay push and my pushing was kind of intense like mm -hmm. i didn't feel the pain but i felt like the pressure and Dr. Goldberg was like, come on, you can do it. And I was like, oh, I was like crying. I was like, I don't know what to do. And, you know, my doula kept telling me, you know what to do. Your body knows what to do. And I'm like, okay, just, just, just shut up. <laughs> I was like, oh, please. I can't imagine. Oh, my God. And all the nurses were like, push, push, push. Yeah. And, I, and I looked at Brian at some point and he was like, okay. He was like, can someone can 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 everyone leave the room for a second because she's clearly freaking out and she's not like the freak out type and i was like just just stop fucking yelling mm -hmm. like let's just like let me breathe a little mm -hmm. you know and then dr Gorbert, you know Gorbert, you know he went to check other patients came back to me and then he walks in into room and brian was like can everyone leave the room please and then Dr. Goldberg came, he took my leg, because I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. He put his, her, he, my leg on his lap. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, like kind of like, you know, like took his legs and he's like, come on, let's just get this baby out. Mm -hmm. And he was just so connected to me. Forget wow. about doulas or midwives. He was just looked in my eyes. He's like, come on. And he like, you know, you know how they push a little. Mm -hmm. And I just pushed and pushed. And I like, you know, I was in a pedal setting because I can compare because mm -hmm. I had two deliveries. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, I, you know, pushed for a while. It wasn't like an easy like push, but I pushed for a while. And finally she, she came into this world, like this beautiful Anna Sophia. She wasn't, she was just like pink and long. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, so cute. She had such a presence, you know. How long it took for you to push like that last bit? Three yeah. hours. Three hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I couldn't say it was traumatic because mm -hmm. it was it was fine, but it was definitely long because it was my first baby. And, you know, it was I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. My body. Didn't and know. it's definitely stressful when all the doctors are in a room. It's like a bunch of people. It's not just like one person there. So it really adds that extra stress. You know, your oh body is already all like intense. Right. And they were all like standing there. Push, push, push. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but Dr. Goldberg calmed me down and he, you know, took Anna Sophia out. And I, you know, barely had any tours, like just like a teeny little one, like. I got up right away because they shut off my epidural at some point because, like, I wanted to feel a little because mm -hmm. I was starting to get, like, numb everywhere, so I didn't feel good with it. Yeah. So I just got up right away and I went to the bathroom. You know, he, he, he like, they took placenta out and everything. And that was my first experience. And um, recovery was pretty tough after that because I was bleeding for two months after. Mm-hmm. Um... And like I kind of felt more sore, maybe because it was like so much of like pushing for a very long mm -hmm. time. But overall, like the feeling of giving birth, like I think it's like my my brain forgot all the like intensity of it. Yes. You know? So that's so beautiful. And then with the second one, and it was the second one. It was surreal because I wanted to do a home birth, not because I didn't like my doctor. But because I was in Miami and I was calling Dr. Goldberg on FaceTime, I was like, Dr. Goldberg, I can't do it without you. I'm going to come to LA and deliver with you. And that was my only option in my head. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I my first delivery went well and healthy. And so your first delivery with Anna Sophia was in LA? In Los Angeles, in Mount Sinai, yes. And with Gia, you were in Florida. I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. 
And just like first time, I had to find a doctor that I could trust. Mm -hmm. I went to so many doctors. I it didn't click mm -hmm. with anyone. So in the end, my friend recommended me to go to this birthing center that was in Broward Hospital. It's like a little, it's like attached to the hospital, but it's not. There's only midwives there. Mm -hmm. It's really far from my house. It's like an hour drive. Um, and um, I clicked was the midwives there they were all like big like older women kind of like you know very nurturing or like like moms like big mamas and i kept like it's seven of them and you can choose mm -hmm. they rotate so every mm -hmm. visit i had someone new that's kind of cool it is but like i'll say like you like one more than another so uh, i really like this one girl who's like our age she was like in mm -hmm. her like mid 30s her name is was Amy. She was like tall, like really positive, like young, like really kind woman. I really like her. And this other um, Afro-American, African-American woman, Mitzi, she was like really mother. He was like this gorgeous hair. And I really connected with them. And when I was um, on the way to the hospital, it was her turn. Mm -hmm. It was Amy. And after Amy, it was Mitzi. Perfect. What, what, is the chan what are the chances, right? Yeah. So, okay, second delivery was a little <laughs> long. <laughs> I started to get contractions. I, I was walking a lot, also like 41 weeks pregnant. Oh, I delivered on my due date, actually. So like exactly, You did with Gia? Mm -hmm. oh, so mm -hmm. exactly like 41 weeks, right? So um, my contractions started around mm, 5 p.m., um, nothing like kind of happened until later mm -hmm. at night. So we went to the hospital around around midnight. So we, we were kind of like exhausted already because my contractions, I could tell this is happening. My plug came out, like my body was like, I could tell it was opening. We went to the hospital and for like hours, it was just like getting more intense and intense and like real contractions, real labor. I knew what I was doing a little bit, even though my first one, I never really felt mm -hmm. any contractions for a long time. And then they were going to uh, draw my blood for something um, at 6 a.m. So all night we were awake in, in the birthing suite and they, they couldn't reach my veins. And my veins are like really thick and big. And I was just so annoyed. I was like, Amy, I need a second. I need to go back home. And she's like, well, by law, I can't really hold you here, so you can go, sure. Mm -hmm. So we went home, and we took a nap again. I love taking <laughs> naps right on your biggest <laughs> moments in life. I love it. Right. And I took a nap because we like desperately scared to be really tired. And I just, now I realize I was just laboring in my bed because I would like take a nap for three minutes, and then like intense contractions will come and around 9 a.m i like tried to wake up brian because my mom was was my uh, first daughter was anna sophia and i'm like babe i think i'm gonna like deliver soon he's like you're fine just take a nap um so at nine o'clock i went to take a shower because i knew we were about to go to the hospital again to the birthing uh, center so while i'm taking a shower it's kicking my butt. It's like, you know, the contractions to me, it felt like, like electricity from both mm -hmm. sides. It's like, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, mm -hmm. kind of like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the shower and we have this great shower with like a little like towel thing. So I was holding the towel thing and the water like ran on my um, lower back and it really made me feel better. So now I understood like, you know, the, the home birth, why they do mm -hmm. it. So I'm basically laboring all by myself in the shower and Brian comes in, checks on me. He's like, you okay? I'm like, yes, but like, I'm kind of like on a lot of pain over here. Um, and at that point I can't eat, I can't drink. It's just like every time the contraction comes, I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we get in the car 
and in a way the hospital it's 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 real and i know she's coming maybe in a car maybe like really soon so we get there and they um put like the things on me um to check her heartbeat and her heartbeat is barely there oh my god so um in a hospital it would be emergency c-section right away but there mitzi she's like marina you're nine and a half centimeters dilated she just she could feel like a little bit left of the you know the opening like there's a little bit left that's why she was saying nine and a half she's like her cord most likely wrapped around uh, her neck Mm -hmm. and every time you have a contraction she's you're choking her so that's why she could never come down my belly was still Mm -hmm. up here so this is very interesting from you all understand now from perspective of delivery she said you can either push really really hard and get her out or we're gonna have to take you next door to the hospital and every contraction i have i'm in so much pain i'm like give me some medicine give me a bedar. like oh like it hurts and she wouldn't come down mm-hmm. and every time a contr- contraction will come she she was choking her heartbeat was not there like mm-hmm. it was like 30 uh, versus like 150 right it would like drop and she was like she was like a binge you know a binge like jump mm-hmm. yes Mm-hmm. She was like, the contraction was pulling her up and then I would like, I couldn't push her out. So I just like, I lay there and like I hold Brian. He was like here. He's like, <laughs> traumatized. It's like fainting, <laughs> fainting. Basically, Mitzi came. She's like, Marina, you got to push so hard. Like you never tried in your life. And I pushed so hard. Like I, I just like pushed her out. <laughs> it's like three pushes. I pushed her out. And without epidural, the the ring of fire and like that, I was like, when when her head was coming out, I was like, she can stay there. It's okay. (laughs) I give up. (laughs) Mitzi is like, she can't say, she's like, Marina, don't give up. She was so incredible. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be done with, I wouldn't be able to do it without her. Oh my God. And I pushed her out and she was as blue as these walls and Brian sat down on the chair because he thought she was dead she was so black she was like the little complete opposite of like "Ah!" Anna Sophia Mm -hmm. to like the little she suffered so much for so many hours where she came out completely blue and then Mitzi was kind of like rubbing her back and then she went "Ah!" and she put it on my chest and yeah and that was experience of my very natural delivery, mm-hmm. which recovery was like, like literally the same day I was carrying my suitcase out of like the mm-hmm. hospital. Um, but yeah, it's so different. What would you say if with mine today? Yeah, if you get pregnant with the third time, yeah, which route would you choose? Um, I would aim for home birth, but Brian wasn't comfortable being so far from the hospital in case of emergencies. And I know, you know, I had two healthy pregnancies and healthy deliveries, but you never know. There's 1%, you know, that something could go wrong. Like, you know, Gia, I could have have a you know, emergency C-section if Gia's heart rate, like, you know, dropped even more. But I was lucky I could, like, push her out. Mm -hmm. So I think I would choose, like, birthing center near the hospital somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Just in case, just to have that safety cushion. Just, like, just, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just in case. And I admire women who trust their bodies and trust their themselves to do it at home but Mm -hmm. i would never forgive me if you know something did happen um Mm -hmm. and you know one second in a hospital could save child or my life or at home it's you know and i don't judge anyone Mm -hmm. i don't judge women who 
choose to have a C-section or, you know, a woman who does epidural because that was my amazing first, you know, um, delivery. But I did really love to, like, feel it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to, and it was amazing because... It was like stages, so I knew what was coming. So it was, it was, yeah, it was incredible. How did you feel emotionally? Because one is giving birth with epidural with Anna yeah. Sophia, and like, was it different that moment when the baby finally was in your arms? Did it change anything? Yeah, it was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It was, you have, you hold your child. It doesn't fucking matter. You had C-section, you had epidural, or you had a natural birth. It's you hold your baby in your belly for nine months and mm -hmm. I think your body doesn't fail you if you have c-section your body doesn't fail you if you uh, any route you take you still did the job right it's still, yeah it's still did <laughs> the job so yeah that's my story now let's 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 hear your <laughs> a huge baby story <laughs> a huge baby story oh my gosh it's actually so much to talk about delivering babies oh my so gosh many. I know details by the way how big was Anna Sophia and how big was Gia they were exactly the same they were seven pounds 15 ounces which is also not small baby mm -hmm. they yeah, were for a girl yeah especially, right? for a girl they were pretty good size because they were kind of late mm -hmm. um so yeah they were good sized babies but um you know yeah they were the same but Gia was much shorter Anna Sophia was like gorgeous supermodel and she was just like this elegant little flower that I had to like open up where did she had the, all the weight then in her cheeks or oh she it... has it all in her butt in her cheeks in her butt and yeah cheeks. honestly it was just like a skinny like she could <gasps> do a runway right away and Gia just like she's like this plush even you know when when you hold them they feel so different like honestly mm -hmm. was always like so linky mm -hmm. and she's still like her legs are like yeah, she's a tall girl. She's a tall girl. And Gia, she's more, she has like this cute butt and this like... <laughs> thick, yeah. thick thighs and like this big like chunky you, face. You guys, you and Brian, they're both tall. Both of them going to be tall. They are, but Anna Sophia was like 54 centimeters and Gia was 49. Like she was like this much, this much shorter. That's a lot for a little baby. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the weight was exactly the same. Exactly the same to one one. Yeah, exactly the same. That's pretty rare, I feel mm -hmm. like. Wow. Um, my delivery story. As I mentioned before, my doctor, Dr. Katz, was on vacation right that week when I was supposed to, uh, when I had my due date. My due date was July 13. And uh, my doctor was on vacation. So he was like, you're in good hands gonna have dr goldberg it's gonna go great uh and if you go past your due date i'm gonna be back and i'm gonna deliver the baby so i was going to dr goldberg he's awesome like everything went well you know i was like okay this is gonna be perfect and uh, so i saw him uh, i would say like two days before i delivered axel i went to his office and he checked me and he's like oh you're not dilating like it's gonna take longer and maybe eventually we're gonna have to induce you because you're gonna be past your due date but that's gonna be on dr katz because he's gonna be back from vacation so it's all good i was like okay then become then it's july 12th and i we were having massage at home by our friend jenna she's amazing masseuse she came over and i asked her i was like listen my due date is tomorrow do you know any like points you could like press on my body just to like see, you know, to, to help me deliver the baby? And she's like, yes, for sure. Let's do like pregnancy massage where I can like, you know, uh, emphasize the... Where are the points? I can't remember exactly, but it was pretty basic. It was like pinky and I think it was on a, on your feet. Yeah, somewhere on your ankles. I think. Yeah, it was like mm -hmm. ankles and hands. Mm -hmm maybe even somewhere around your arms, but it was very basic. But I remember like she was like pressing something and doing her thing and it was evening. So she does massage, she leaves and um, I'm going to bathroom. This may sound a little gross, but <laughs> I go to bathroom. I pee and I see little pink 
Yay. And I'm like, oh my God, what does this mean? And I started having like a period pain, but like very mild one. Mm -hmm. I start Googling what that means. And it says that it could be like early signs of delivery that I should not be worried about. It's just like instead sometimes for females, instead of water breaking right away, it can be uh, just like a little blood coming out because of, yeah. uh, you know, clots. The, or whatever. the, the, the plug. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to wait. Let's see what happens. I didn't tell anything to Bryant and his sister was in town as well. So I was like, I'm going to keep it to myself just to see maybe it's just like a fake contraction pain. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to feel what, what happens to me. But I go out in living room and I'm, uh, I'm telling Brian's sister, I'm like, Autumn, let's go for a walk. Cause you know, I was like, if it's starting, I got to walk this off. And yeah. it was like 7, p 8 PM in the evening. We start watching. She's like, okay, well, Ginta wants to go take a walk at 8 PM. Let's do it. <laughs> so we take a long walk. We come back home. We have dinner. And I gradually feel like my pain start coming more and more. So you're having contractions. Yes. And uh, it really just felt like a period pain at that point. But like I could feel like stronger and stronger, like by each like 30 minutes. And uh, by the time it was 11 p.m., Brian and his sister, they're like, OK, I'll just all go to bed. And I was tired, too. But I was like, can I even fall asleep? I was like, OK, let me try. But I didn't want to say anything yet because I was like, I'm not sure what's happening right now. And I wanted Brian to get sleep because this is going to be when it happens, like we're going to have to run to the hospital. Uh, so he fell asleep right away. It was like, I remember it was 11 p.m. And I was in a shower. I took a long shower uh, and nothing really helped me. I didn't feel better. It's just like became stronger and stronger. By midnight, I was like, let me just try to close my eyes. Let's see what happens. I lie down. I close my eyes and I feel like my body is almost like shaking. Like I, I start feeling like I have earthquake in me. <laughs> you know? It's like that feeling. It's just so something you never felt before. And that's like, I think it's the closest word that I can use for contractions. For me, it was like earthquake. Wow. And it's so funny how it's so interesting for like everyone. Some mm -hmm. people say it's like period pain, like for me, it was like electricity, like when you try mm -hmm. to like jumpstart the, the car, you know, like yeah. eh. for you, it was like the earthquake, you know? Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. Because I, I literally felt like my body is splitting in half. Wow. Where? Like just down there. Th just down? Like where you? Mm. Yeah. Because okay. you, you remember, Marina, my belly was huge. And so was your ankles. My ankles, like I was bloated like yeah. last month before delivery my body was just like containing so much water yeah. so it was hard for you it was the really hard mm -hmm. for me and i feel like the baby was putting so much pressure down there that's why it probably felt that like airquake -y feeling that everything's just like you know it was opening yeah so but i really felt it like something oh. heavy is about to happen like it was just really hardcore and it just kept on going like harder and harder. And then I have this app that I downloaded to um, count the contractions. Count the contractions. Mm -hmm. And so I start counting them and they were not regular. But I was like, oh, my God, how much longer am I going to have to like go through this? Like, I'm like, I can't believe they're not even regular. And I'm like. But you knew you were having a baby in a few hours, right? Or you were just like, oh, it's fake. No, at that point. Yeah. Like by midnight when I realized I can't sleep, yeah. I knew that. It's starting to happen. Yeah. But even then, I didn't want to still wake him up because I was like, he needs to get some rest because when we have to go, like, we're going to have to run. See what I mean about the sleep? Like, yeah. they need their sleep. Yeah, it's true. It's very interesting how you become, like, so considered to make sure, like, right. you know, because you have baby coming. You want to make sure one parent is at least rested. Right. Yeah. And so it was around 2 a.m., I was uh, I was in tears and I, I was just like it just like this crazy sharp sensation would come every like it it basically became very regular like there were like few minutes like I could relax and then it just like bam like in your body and you're like oh my god this is insane <laughs> and when I realized I can't keep even keep it low my voice Brian woke up and I'm like Brian it's happening you didn't put the car seat in the car we're like you gotta do it now like <laughs> and he's like oh my god he's like it's happening i'm like yes 
he's like i'm gonna wake up my sister i'm like don't wake her up yet like we're gonna we need time to like prepare we d- we didn't like pack yet like we're just like all over the place because we just move in a new house it's <laughs> so cute and we we're like just like ah like kind of figuring things out and i thought the car seat is gonna take a minute because i because everyone's always like be sure you install the car seat it takes a right. long time it takes one second it takes one second mm-hmm. and that's what happened brian's like oh it was pretty easy just like put it in he figured it out it was all good and then he helped me uh finish packing i remember i packed like the ball you know that you like blow up in a hospital yeah. the, like the bouncing ball yeah i got like because i would watch like all these videos on youtube i was like oh i need this i need that i had like we had two big suitcases to go to hospital you don't need shit i you tell don't need you that. anything yeah yeah like, literally nothing there's not one thing that i would be like i'm so glad i took this with me yeah. you know i don't need anything they give you they give you everything for the baby in a hospital like everything we brought so much stuff as us and like for your clothes, like whatever, you you wear the same thing. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> the only thing, maybe like the first clothes, you want to take your baby home just because yeah. you want to take that picture, you know, where you take right. baby home. It's kind of cute. But that's it. Like everything else they give you. Yeah. They give you extra diapers and everything. But it was funny. We, we basically rolled in like like we we're in a vacation. For, we came <laughs> somewhere for vacation for like a month. Um, anyway, so... It kind of took a long time for us to like pack everything organized. I took another shower and I was like, you know what? I want to like kind of look pretty in between contractions. I like straighten my hair <laughs> to make sure I kind of look decent when I get to the hospital. All that was out of the window because I was just like a mess. When, <laughs> when you're in a hospital and you're in a moment when you have to deliver baby, you just like go for it. And it's like, yeah, you whatever. Don't care. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we left house. It was around... I would say 6 a.m. Oh, wow. At that time. So you like yeah. having contractions for all the whole night. A whole night and wow. like bad ones. And actually the only position that helped me like ease my pain would be when I hold Bryant around his right. neck mm-hmm. like this and kind of like slouch down. It would be the only time that I could be like, I think I could relax my back. Right. And that really helped. It did. It's like when I was in the shower, when I was holding yes. the, the, the towel thing, it really helped. I agree. I think like every woman has her own like thing, like through before delivering a baby, what really works for her and helps. Like to me, not like shower didn't help me. I was just like so intense all the time. And that was like the only time where I just like hang myself down. And that really helped. And so, yeah, we finished packing. We get in the car at 6 a.m. We woke up with Brian's sister. She was taking Duke, care of Duke because we had a dog. And she was so excited. And she's like, it's all going to go well. And I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> so we get in the car, start driving to the hospital, see their Sinai. And halfway there, I'm like, Ryan, but you took you took the bag uh, from baby's room, right? Because that's like where Axel's like first clothes are and like all the things for him. And he's like... I didn't even go in that room. And I'm like, oh my God, we didn't take baby stuff. I'm like, we got to go back. We go back to the house. Keep in mind, it's like already like 6.30. It's like traffic hour. We leave the house. We're like stuck in traffic. It's like 7 a.m. We're stuck in traffic. Sun is coming up and I'm so exhausted. I don't know what to do with myself. I called my mom and she's like, Ginta, you're not in hospital yet? Like, sounds like you're about to deliver the baby. Yeah, that sounds like that to me. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm panicking. I'm like, I cannot believe it. I'm like, Brian, maybe I'm going to give birth in a car. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. There's so much traffic. It took us forever to get to the hospital. We walk in. Everyone's so chill in the hospital. Dr. Goldberg walks through the hallway and he's like, hi, Ginta. Listen, I just finished my shift. I'm not going to be here today. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, what? I'm about to give birth. And my doctor's gone you're really who's gonna deliver the baby yeah and he's like don't worry you're in the great hands uh it's dr kuzinov she's gonna like take care of you and so she's from the same same office practice. Mm-hmm. same practice and uh she was amazing she was so sweet she came in introduced herself um later but when i got to the hospital nurses they're like we don't think you're ready you're not even open, like, I think she said, like, you're only, like, three centimeters. Oh, and that's I was so like, I'm like, oh, my God, there's, like, seven more to go, and I'm dying. You're like, I'm dying already. Yeah, like, how am I going to survive this? 
And she's like, maybe you can go home and come back. I'm like, I can't even walk. Oh I was my in gosh. so much pain. And she's like, but do you understand if you give you epidural now? Because I was like, listen, I don't care. Just give me epidural. And that's it. Like, I cannot. Like, it was so painful. I was like crying. And she's like, well, do you understand if you take epidural, you're not going to be able to walk. You know, you, that's it. Like, you lie down and until you deliver baby. And I'm like, listen, I haven't slept all night. I'm exhausted. I need energy to deliver baby. You wanted to rest and sleep a little. So I was like, I don't care that I'm not going to be able to walk because all I want right now is to sleep. Like I can't uh, like it's I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to have energy to deliver baby. And um, she was like, OK. And that was like around already 9 a.m. And then until the time that I actually got epidural was 11 a.m. Because he was busy, like going around the hospital, taking care of other patients. I was just like sitting there. And then I remember they were trying to find my way in and it was the same thing they couldn't they kept on poking in a wrong that's place. so annoying it's like they should be so good at it in hospital and that's actually one of the painful things that i experienced in the hospital one was like of course giving birth but the second was this needle because it's a big one too it's not your small they have to needle. put it here you know they have to put it in your um, yeah. arm yeah but I think normally you can see my veins pretty well, you know. But there, I was looking at my arm. It was like a ghost, just like pale. Maybe you were dehydrated. Anything. Maybe. I think I was just so intense. So they came in with this like special machine and I had to sit still. And I'm like, I'm like this, like, ah. And like, they're like, hold your arm still. So we got to find, find where's your vein. Anyways, like they were scanning through this machine. Finally, they found, it was like so dramatic. And then the guy comes in. Oh, but at that point, they finally gave me room. It was around, like, after 9 a.m. They give me the room. I get to the room. And uh, my water didn't broke yet, right? I get to the room, and then suddenly I'm walking to the bed, and my water breaks. Yeah. Just like, <sighs> Were you so happy at that moment? I was shocked. I was like, what's happening? Like, you know, it's, again, new feeling. Yeah. Everything is just so new for you yeah. that day. Yeah. And I looked down, I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. That was the moment where I was like, okay, this is it. Like uh, he comes any any moment. And Brian was sitting behind me and he's like, holy. <laughs> it was a lot of water. Yeah. And he like splashed like, wow. and he was just like shocked. He didn't expect that, you know, because I was just walking to the yeah. bed. And he, he was behind me. Gia really was actually born in a sag. I forgot to mention that. That's really cool. Yeah. It's like for good she luck. She was born in like a, she was... Yeah, she was a little magic baby. But anyway, so your water breaks. My water breaks. I get to my bed finally. They give me the room. Then epidural guy comes at 11. He gives me epidural. I don't even remember what pain, like how actually epidural feels. I remember before that stressing out, if I choose to do epidural, I was like, oh my God, they put the needle in the back, like how it's going to be. Yeah. But actually it was like, Compared to anything, else, everything else that happens around, it's it was nothing. like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't even think about it. And I was just shocked how much relief I got, and I could relax finally, and I could just lie back and like s fell asleep. And I was like, "Doctors, I can't believe I feel so good now. Like it really relaxed me." And you know, I'm a pretty like healthy person in terms of like, what I choose in my life to eat, what I use for my skin, and and things like that. But I felt like I feel like my pain level is very low in general and I don't like doctors and I'm not <laughs> like all about that like it freaks me out that epidural I was like for sure if I really I wish I was that strong to be like okay like I gave natural birth you know and and no epidural I, I needed help it was really tough on me I can tell you because I was uh, dilated for three centimeters for like three days and I was having like a little pain and then six centimeters was pretty intense but 10 centimeters I was screaming bloody murder give me an epidural right now and they obviously can't when you like a minute away from delivering baby is like next level <laughs> I can only imagine that so like I think there's no judgments. If you don't want to go through like that, like intensity, I mm -hmm. think epidural is it's fucking great, you know? I agree. And I feel like every woman knows their body the best and how much they can 
deal with and whatever choose whatever choice they make it's it's for them to have that extra support or they feel like they need a water bath or whatever it is to to make you comfortable and like survive that moment <laughs> right. and kind of enjoy then whatever it is i think it's just like that's what you do right you it's know? like choice of yeah every woman yeah their choice exactly and so I chose epidural just because I was exhausted and I needed to save my energy and I wanted to push the baby out and just be happy and enjoy that moment. <laughs> then like be, be so intense right before that and not to sleep. And so by the time they gave me epidural, I was 11, then I fell asleep and I felt so good. I took a nap and I didn't even eat nothing. I wasn't even hungry. It was just like all like, all I wanted is to sleep. I feel like all night I was like on survival. I feel you, girl, because I told you every time we were ready to go to the hospital, we were trying to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> but it's smart because you, you kind of know what's what's going to come. You need energy for that. You yeah, know? you can't be super exhausted for it. It's yeah, like... exactly. And so, yeah, so I was I was fine just sleeping all day. And we had a nice room and Brian was chilling and just like such a good support and i'm so happy he was in the room with me because originally i was thinking maybe i can do it on my own or he's gonna stay behind my head mm -hmm. and just like hold my shoulders oh no he was all in like holding did he hand. watch everything no yes brian didn't oh he would never really he would never he would pass out and die and like he was standing by my shoulder mm -hmm. So he saw baby coming out, but not like. Yeah, not like. Uh, yeah. Like there. It's the view. Nope. Mm -mm, he would never. But you know, our doctor was kind of encouraging that too. Because first I was like, no, no, he's okay. He can stay behind my head. But but I felt like I kind of need more support because I had like one person holding my leg, other person holding. I'm yeah. like, who are these people? I don't even know them. And kind of Brian, I was like, oh, we're in this together. And then Brian's like, I'm going to hold your leg. Like he was all like about, yeah, I'm going to do it. And like he did, he saw everything, helped and like got the baby first, took off his shirt, put it on his oh. arms. So he was born after 6 p.m. in the evening. Finally, he just came because I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's let's do this. And so wait, you didn't finish your story. You took a nap on epidural. Yeah. And so all day I was like napping, 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 relaxing. Yeah. And then what happened? How did you feel that it was more intense? 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. nurse. So nurse would come occasionally and check up on us. And then I was like, what do you think? What's your prediction when the baby's going to come? She's like, oh, probably past midnight. You know, it's not going to oh. happen today. And those are 5 p.m. And then uh, before 5 p.m. Then around 5 p.m. she comes in again and she's like, okay, how are you feeling? And I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I feel so heavy down there. Like, I don't know what's happening. So she checked me and she's like, you're 10 centimeters. That's what happened to me, Ginta. Yeah. With Anna Sophia, because I was also an epidural and mm -hmm. I was like, I need to poo. I need to poo. Yes. <laughs> that was the feeling. She's like, how do you feel? I'm like, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. She's like. No, you don't. She's like, and that I think she got it because usually yeah. probably girls right. always say that yeah. at that point. So interesting. So she checked me too and she was like, okay, push. I'm like, push what? And then, you know, <laughs> you heard my story. But yeah, yeah, I was exactly yeah. the same. I was nothing to 10. Like, you that's, know. 10. Yeah, that's what basically happened. Right. But then she told me she thinks the new nurse made a mistake when she checked me when I first got to hospital. She thinks I was at least five centimeters already. Because she's like, she's like, it's three centimeters. Women don't look like you looked. You were in, in too much pain. Was in too much pain. Yeah, because three centimeters, you don't really feel contractions. You just have like a little teeny like crumps. Yeah, you know? that's what she said. She's mm -hmm. like, based on how you were behaving, she's like, you were at least five centimeters already. And she's like, and because you delivered at 6 p.m. when I thought, based on what she told me in the morning, I thought you're going to deliver the next day or yeah. past midnight. She's like, for sure you were more. And, um, yeah, but actual delivery was very interesting because, you know, how epidural has this little thing you can like, add more to it. I didn't know it. I didn't know it existed. So I only had like the first dose at 11. So by the time I had to push baby, it was pa uh, a little over past 6 p.m. I felt everything like they would tell me because they were watching in a the monitor. They're like, OK, push now. 
and I'm like, you guys are late. Like, uh, I'm like, I have to push a little bit earlier. And they're like, okay, don't listen to us. Do your thing. Because I could feel it. Like I knew when exactly I had to push. And it was, I remember when they, they tell you like to push one, two, three, and then breathe. Yes. That was a little annoying, no? Yeah. And they all scream and they're like, it's so intense. It's so fucking annoying. That's why Brian kicked mm -hmm. them out. In the birthing center, they didn't do that. She was just really? like, she would just push. She was push. Push any, she said, push anytime you want. Really? Push with and without contractions. That's what she told me. Even without contractions? Yep. And I delivered in three pushes. With and without contractions. And without contractions, it actually helped a lot. to. So just why do hospitals say to push? I honestly don't know. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. We got to do a little research on that. I'm right. curious. Wow. Okay. And they scream like on the fucking football team, you know? Yes. And it's just like so intense that moment. But to be honest, it was the most beautiful moment of the whole delivery. Yeah. Because, you know, it's so close. And it's so intense and I could feel everything. And I, my worst was like contractions and the whole like journey with that and like how long it was dragging for me. It just like was exhausting. But then when actually I had to push, it took me 30 minutes and like baby was out. Like it's just like boom, boom, boom. And how was, incredible is that moment when you first see a baby? It's surreal. So I'll tell you first yeah. what was shock. I, I think my breath was taken away. I couldn't even speak at first. So when I delivered Axel, I remember he comes out and all intensity, like all the pain or like whatever your body's feeling was gone. It goes it like away. Time stops. Like nothing happened. And you I will, you were it. never in pain. Yeah, never. Like nothing. The pain never existed. Nothing. It's amazing. I was going to tell you that, but you were, you know, you were telling your story, but I was going to ask you, don't you feel like after all these hours, mm -hmm. you're so tired, you're so exhausted, your body in so much, much pain, you see the baby and even Dr. Goldberg was making like a joke after it. You're like, oh my God, this is my baby. Let me take a picture. <laughs> like that, like it yeah. just goes away. It's incredible that that intense, intense, intense. And then suddenly you're just like, okay. This is, this is it. And it's like my breath was taken away. Cause like, and the little, we had a little hiccup because Axel didn't scream right away. I didn't even pay attention to that because I knew he will at some point, you know, that mom power. I'm just like, he, yeah. I was like, he's fine. He's fine. And everyone's like, like counting seconds. One's like looking at the clock. Like it was a very intense moment. <sighs> and then suddenly the, I think the, the kind of. I can't remember exactly what I did. And he like just had that. their back or something. Yeah, there was mm -hmm. something they did. And then eventually it was like this loud, like. Rah! And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm finally meeting you. That you've been in me for this long time. I know. And finally I can hold you on me instead of in me. It was just so beautiful. Like, it's so crazy that the actual, the journey of the birth and you like create a human. Yeah, and then you like see it for the first time, like. And he was he was almost ten pounds. Yeah, I know he was huge. And doctor was like, "Whoa, I didn't <laughs> expect that." I had other doctors coming in our room. Just to, they're like, "We heard you have this big baby," and I'm like, "Is that not common here?" Like thinking there's so many women give birth. She's like, "Not that common," and he was born July 13th, which was exactly his due date. Due date as well. So I guess that massage worked. I guess so. I, yeah. <laughs> day before. I don't know if that was because of that, but. But also he was born on his due date, which, you know, mm -hmm. possible. Kind of meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was just like this, this cute little nugget. And I remember he had like a very puffy feet. And I think he oh. held a lot of weight in his feet. It was like a little clouds. I was like, oh my God, like obsessed so with baby cute. feet. I know. Oh, so adorable. And then, yeah, we had like really good time. Like we went to room recovery room me and brian we were just like over the moon and we ordered some mr chow that <laughs> night because i was like i want like some good meal like yeah just enjoy this night and brian was so sweet he stayed up all night just to watch baby and i could sleep and recover after and then the next day um baby doctor came and brian was passed out he didn't even meet the doctor because he was so tired it was just so funny how we were taking turns yeah and nurse is like but you could have slept it's okay baby screams when when he's away right. <laughs> yeah baby it's fine but we we're just so nervous and uh it was just a beautiful thing and here they are babies in the world 
Well, it's incredible, Ginta. I'm so, I'm so happy for like you know my girlfriends who have kids right now, and I'm like, if anyone gets pregnant again or for the first time, I'm like, oh my god, you're really, you're gonna be like all new you, and you you have this world of motherhood and like world of you know that love that like it's it's fucking mm-hmm. insane. Like you never have that love for like your partner as for like your kids they're like they are part of you mm-hmm. they are have your dna and it's like it's yeah. insane like i told brian i'm like we're never gonna let axel leave leave the house like yeah. i'm like i can't even think about the day when he can actually be like bye guys and like leaves the house and i'm like where are you going oh, no, i know i already cry world. about it yeah it's scary yeah. like anna sophia goes to school now and after school she comes back like she went to ski school in Colorado this summer, uh, this winter. And every time I pick her up, she's like, don't touch me. I'm going to do it myself. And she goes like, don't touch me. <laughs> I'm like, Little personality is right. coming out. She like wants to be independent already at three years old. So I'm like, oh my God, like my baby. It's, it's beautiful. Well, Ginta, thank you for sharing this, you know, a very detailed in a yeah. you know personal story, I know it could be hard, you know, sometimes to open up mm-hmm. to. And I know. loved your story, Marina. And it's like very interesting to hear perspective from like completely two different birds, and equally both are amazing. And you know, whatever journey woman chooses to go with delivery, whatever it is, it serves for her, and it's it's just wonderful. Yeah, no one should feel like they're did a bad job or their body failed them or don't be har- you know? so harsh on yourself so harsh yeah like the you baby's know? gonna come out it's not gonna stay there exactly you know? and one one way or another you 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 you, you made a baby you're you know you're give the birth to them one way or another and your body didn't fail you in any way mm-hmm. so I, I think that's 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 what should be out there not not feel like it should be a home birth for you to like be a good mom mm-hmm. or non epidural or whatever. Or just like, yeah, like just look at the other moms. And it's inspiring to see, of course, other moms and the different experiences. But I think for each woman should find her own way, whatever serves her and what makes her comfortable. Or even if it's surrogacy, you know. Yeah, whatever or it is. If it's, you know. Or if you choose not to have kids at all. Yeah, you know, you, you, know, you, you make your baby with whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, we have some exciting guests who can share their, you know, journey to a baby and IVFs and surrogacy and, you know, uh, same sex marriage and, you know, parenthood. So, yeah. Thank you for your story. Yeah. Thank you, Marina, for your story. And on this note, uh, we're going to finish. Thank you guys so much for watching, tuning in. And we're going to see you in next episode. Bye. Bye.